You know who did it? Am I the only one that remembers this? No, I remember. The hidden tomb from, uh, Can I get back to you on that? No problem. Gracias. Yeah, see but yeah, she was uh, <clears throat> called in when her uh, father's body was found and so forth. I was under the impression she lived in the house, so that's why I, I was kind of shocked. But all right. 
Yeah, I thought she was a local too. Sorry, that one was my bad. Okay. And... No, no problem. I mean, you know, I've really never met her before. It's alright if I don't know everything about her. Uh, on the, let's see. Give me just a second to locate the map. Okay. <clears throat> During the night, uh, you are, let's see, who's up studying? Darius? Yep. That would be me. Uh, why don't you uh, roll a perception check? Okay, as you're sitting there at the little table and so forth, research. That was a profession check. Oops. I mean, you're close. It's actually the same modifier, at least. <laughs> I was like, perception teacher? I've never seen that before. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just seen the number and didn't even <laughs> read the label. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um... <clears throat> As you're sitting there uh, studying and so forth, uh, uh, you just happen to look out the window and some uh, the shadow outside of the house, a little bit in the distance, uh, catches your eye and you can tell it's like slowly staggering towards the house. I knew we should have looked at the crypt earlier. Now the zombies are coming here. I'll see if I can get... Well, actually, um, I will use my... Uh... My Crypt Breakers drop, and um, which improves my perception, and I'm going to activate dark vision with it. Okay. Uh, from from this distance you can tell um this person is uh appears to be, you know, very dirty, uh like Maybe they've rubbed mud on for camouflage and so forth. Uh, from inside the house, you really can't get a good enough look at it, but you do notice that, you know, it's it's walking strange. I will go wake up the others. Oh, sorry, is it moving towards the house or is it just sort of wandering by? Uh, I, you believe that it, it looks like it is moving towards the house. Okay, then in that case, yes, I'll go wake up um, Kendra and Vitiger and Lonely Sword. Yeah, your alchemist sense is tingling. 
<laughs> yeah, I'll wake everyone up and just let them know that someone appears to be approaching the house and um, you know, they're walking strange. They look like they're um, either trying to hide themselves or they're, you know, recently come out of the ground. Alright, so are we awake? Uh, yes, if you want to be awake. <laughs> well, I don't think he's giving us <laughs> the option. When someone comes wake you up, it's not up to you if you're awake <laughs> or not. <laughs> I'll scream in your ear until you roll out of bed. Uh, yes. Definitely awake. <laughs> you are definitely awake. <laughs> if you want to get out of bed, that's up to you. <laughs> Alright, uh, yeah. uh, there's no shields and there's no, like, extra equipment in the house other than what we have, right? Correct. What, are you hoping that the uh, the daughter of the dead man has an armory? <laughs> I didn't know if the old dead man had an armory. <laughs> well, I'm gonna put my uh, I'm gonna put my stuff on, and uh, I'm gonna head outside to see what's going on. Okay. If uh... I'm also gonna cast light on my armor so that I can see. Yeah, then I'll get dressed too. Okay, everybody's going outside, correct? Yep. Um, I thought we saw him out a window. Wait, we can't be brought to that window? She saw him from a window. You want to go to the window and look at him? Uh, I guess we can go outside. I was just hoping to get an idea of what we're dealing with. Uh, well, looking outside, um, you have a good feeling that this is indeed an undead monster coming toward the house. I'm activating my blessing. I'm activating my greatsword. That doesn't really do anything, but I thought I'd say it. <laughs> okay. And for all practical purposes, the front porch of the house is just south of you. All right. And, uh, yeah, let's roll for initiative. And we have one more four. Is that a zombie from a graduation gone awry? <laughs> it would appear so. We're in deep shit now. Bittiger, would you like to roll your net? Oh, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Three fours in a row. <laughs> it's going to be one of those nights. Actually, it's four fours in a row if you count Darius's last roll. Yes, it is. <laughs> We're still up before the zombie, apparently. <laughs> and, Darius, uh, you are up. All right, Darius will, you know, start to move down off the porch. Are we doing free movement, or did you want to um, have us request moves? Lock tokens is what you mean, I think. Yeah. Now, uh, which do you all really prefer? I prefer lock tokens, actually, because it lets me see exactly how far I can move. Okay, tokens are locked. 
Uh, it lets me plot out my exact path so I can say, no, I'm not provoking that guy because I'm going to that square to that square. What button do I got to press again for the lock thing? Nothing. It's you just drag your character now. But to change directions while you're moving, isn't there something you have to click? You just move it somewhere, and then let go, and it will stop there, and then you drag it from where you stopped it, and you drag ah, it somewhere okay. else. Okay, no problem. And that's all he will do for the moment. What do you want to do, Lonely Sword? Am I able to charge, or did he just move in front of me? Uh, yeah, I'll let you charge up. Alright. I'm going to charge. Charge! Oh yeah, I gotta fix my kukri. I was actually running my kukri one lower than it should be because it's a master uh, weapon, master work. Ooh, hit on a five. Uh. Before you go, uh, Lonely Sword, uh, would you roll a perception? Sure. <laughs> right as you hit, uh, you, you kind of look the zombie in the face, and the face that's looking back at you is... Um, your your friend, the Professor Lorimore. And you can see that, you know, it, it, you just buried him. So, you know, you're thinking he just crawled out of the grave. <laughs> oh, lovely. Still going to kill you. Sorry, Professor. <laughs> Whoever did that's a dirtbag. Oh. I'm up, right? Okay. Yep. I'm just going to take a double move. And then there's a button that I relinquish the turn, right? Yes. Combat so tracker. There's an arrow at the bottom of it. Knew it was somewhere. Uh, Lonely Sword, he's going to try and slam into you. And you're able to sidestep out of the way. And he's going to take a five foot step. Darius, you are up. He'll just move out. Keep an eye on things. Uh -oh, five foot step up. And yell, uh, oh yeah, I'm going to tell everyone, you know, it's the professor. He turned to a zombie, and then I'm going to swing. Uh, I'm 
I'm kind of curious to why my damage reduction's not working on that one. <laughs> uh, what kind of DR did he have? Uh, he's got DR5 slashing. I do slashing. Uh, that's right. <laughs> slashing cold iron and good. So if it's any of those, then I bypass it. Okay, the professor drops to the ground. Re-dead. Dead again. Un undead. Take your pick. Uh, I will look at my compatriots and say, uh, mm, maybe we should uh, take his body back and bury it before his daughter notices. That might be for the best. It's probably worthwhile checking out his tomb regardless to see if there's any evidence of exactly why he came back or who's responsible. Yeah, it doesn't make sense for it, him to have just risen from the dead for no reason. Though it makes sense if someone's trying to torture his daughter. Well, he did uh, investigate the undead a lot, so maybe he made some enemies and they uh, just didn't like him, so they brought him back to, you know, hurt him. Why don't we weigh? Why don't Why don't we weigh him down, in case that happens again? Um, can I make a religion check? Can he get up again? Uh, yes. And as far as you know, he can't. Okay. Well, I mean, I'll just uh, after we put him back in his casket, I'll cut his head off. <laughs> All right. Well, no, because I'd rather put weight on him. Let's not be carrying him. Let's go to where he came from and see if there's a problem. I wouldn't want to be carrying weight around if there's a problem. Not to mention we'll be carrying a dead body that seems to have exhumed itself. I don't know if people are going to be too thrilled with that. Well, for not taking him back, we should at least move him out of the way. We don't want to basically leave him in the middle of the street where anyone can stumble over him. I agree, and I'd like to secure him as well. I'll use some rope and tie him up. Okay. And, you know, there's a couple of places in the uh, front yard that, you know, you can hide him behind a bush and so forth. Oh, man. <laughs> We're going to, this daughter's going to die from fright. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you guys go? Ah, daddy. <laughs> no, it's going to be, uh, I'm going to go out and tend to the garden. Oh, my God. She's going to go shower in the garden. Come on. <laughs> they go tend to the garden, pick some weeds, you know. If she's gardening in the middle of the night, she kind of gets what she deserves. <laughs> hey, we don't know when we're coming back. Or if you're coming back. Okay, so you've managed to uh, securely tie up the un undead. Or re undead, something like that. Well, he's a dead undead. A dead undead. Yeah, that's it. So, off to investigate his grave? Yeah, I think we had probably better, even though, you know, wandering the graveyard at dark isn't probably the wisest decision. We really should get to the bottom of it. I mean, if we're not taking him with us, then uh, I'd rather wait until the morning. We might not have the ability to find who... I mean, if someone did this, if it's not spontaneous. Yeah, I think the sooner we investigate it, probably the better. The risk How much sleep did we get, by the way? Uh, you probably got about three hours. Yeah, I know. I'd rather finish my sleep for the night. I don't want to get exhausted in the middle of this. Darius, are you staying? No, Darius is going. He doesn't think that it would be responsible not to look into it. Let's go. 
I light a torch because I can't see at night. <laughs> <laughs> Darius will take the lead. He still has his little potion working, so he has dark vision at the moment. Okay, Lonely Sword, you're going back to get your sleep, right? Well, uh, if they're going to go, I'll go with them. A sigh is the sign of a true companion. I am how we're going to tie this undead up with my rope and drag him with us, because I'm reburying him if they insist on going now. Well, you just have to tie him a rope to the rope I tied around him already. Yeah, yeah. I'll drag him behind us back to the graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Professor. We might try, want to try to find as circumspect a route through town as we can, given that, you know, we're hauling a dead body behind us. Yeah. It, it, if it's... we go through the south and west, we'll stay away from the center of town. Yeah, we'll probably That's have fine. to take the long way around. There's at least, you know, many farms and stuff on that way. And it's the middle of the night, so, you know, odds are you won't encounter too many people. Right. No. <laughs> okay, you are... Reshare the map. You're back at the uh, same entrance of the cemetery, and you managed to um, <sighs> drag the professor along and make it through town without being seen. And you stand out at the entrance of the cemetery. Uh, I'm going to look over at the uh, paladin and say, uh, you know, you could give it... Uh... I don't know if it would work or not, but you could try to do uh, Detect Evil in front of us as we walk for an early warning system, just in case. We'll have to slow down. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Okay. I, think it might, I think it might be worth it just in case, though. You never know. That could save us. All right, I will be concentrating on Detecting Evil, which means what? I get, like, one move ra action around then, right? Yeah, because it takes your standard to concentrate. Yeah. All right, so well, if we, everyone agrees to slow down, I'll do that. Yep. Okay. Um, up, up by the circle uh, is the letter B. That's uh, the actual professor's grave site. And which route do you want to take? Do you want to follow the roads or just go straight line? I think we're probably better following the roads. It gives us, you know, a clearer line of sight. Technically, just so, um, I mean, I, I wasn't aware of this either, but um, <laughs> I should have been. Um, but a, a Paladin's Detect Evil is just a move action. Uh, either way, you only get one move action because you would use a move action, then you'd use your no, standard know, to move. But it might matter at a later point. Not that is that that is useful though. But is it a uh, move action to continue to concentrate on it? Um. As by can, default, as a move action, concentrate on a single item or individual within sixty feet. Determine if it is evil, learning the strength of a Torah as if having studied it for three rounds. Huh. I. Th that's different than uh, the spell. Yeah. No, it is. You're right. That's not that's that's not a, a cone like uh, the spell is. That is true also, though. I'm not sure if that would be useful. That wouldn't tell you anything unless you saw someone first, would it? Oh, no. At will, I can also use it as the spell, but as a move action, I can concentrate and get the three rounds of information. That's the breakdown. My bad. Ah, uh, okay, so you can do either. I or, or even both. Like, you'd see the cone, then you could home in on an individual as the move action. So your standard is detecting evil, concentration, move action, home in on an individual. I'm guessing that's why they did it. <laughs> yep, that works. All right, let's that move. makes more sense. Darius is taking the lead. Yep, I'm going to uh, 
walk behind because I'm dragging the body. Okay. Uh, tell you what, let's uh, going to go ahead and put you all up here at the center section. All right. And um, you're starting to detect the presence of evil. I'm dropping the rope. It's coming from behind you. It's the professor again. Can you uh, re remove my buff, by the way? My DMG 1D6? Because that's yeah. only 10 rounds. I think it took us a while to get here. Okay, uh, Vitager, uh, you notice, um, one of the graves, um, ahead of you, it, 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 the ground is starting to bulge. And just a little bit away from it, uh, you can, you notice the ground is starting to bulge right there. And 15 feet away, uh, you see uh, a skeleton that has already emerged from the ground. And if everyone would like to roll initiative... Oh, cha changes in the um, points. You have to um, reset the um, hotkey, right? Uh, yeah, you sure do. All right. That's that's one of the drawbacks. So it would have need... only been a six instead of a five, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> Not a huge difference. <laughs> Every bonus counts. Okay, uh, Lonely Sword, uh, you're, you're up. Alright, uh, I'll drop the rope that I'm pulling. Ooh, uh, could you lock us? Move up here. Pulling out my light hammer as I go. Well, where's the ground bulging again? Is it that arrow oh. that's ten feet? Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Sorry, I'm actually gonna go here and pull out my weapon. Also, I want to roll a knowledge on the skeleton. <laughs> I might have got it. Skeletons aren't very high. You never know. Hey, they're made of bones. <laughs> All right. If you have a dog, he'd like one. They were and, uh, probably dead. I'm going to ready an action to hit anything that's hostile that pops out of the ground or walks towards me. Okay, skeleton one. It's going to come down here and try to claw Darius. And misses. Darius will take a five foot step back. <clears throat> and he's going to pull out one of his bombs and toss it towards the skeleton. So does my rating go off for Skeleton 1 now, or what? I'm sorry, what'd you ask? My ready to action, can I go off for Skeleton 1 here? You can take a 5 foot step as part of it, can't you? 
Uh, that means that he would be within my range. Yeah, I think he can. Alright. Oh. Target him. I don't know if 11 hit or not. Uh, no, 11 misses. Mm, killed him. Seems like you didn't need a throw bomb. Is he dead? Yeah, apparently. Uh, oh, that is yes. dead. <laughs> uh, that, that one is dead, but you can see the other one starting to emerge from the ground. Okay, I sheathe my great sword, and as I move towards it, I'm going to draw my warhammer, but that'll just put me in range of the creature. I just tapped it with a hammer. It fell apart. Is that all you're doing this round? Oh, well, because I sheathed my greatsword yeah. and I walked and drew, so it's technically two move actions. So yeah, that's it. Okay, Skeleton 2 is uh, next turn. If there is one, he will be out of the ground. And well, Actually, I guess he's halfway out of the ground, so he can take an attack. Now he's going to come out. Is he technically getting up from prone? Uh, yeah, he, he is crawling up out of the ground. Then I'm gonna hit him for that. <laughs> if I get an attack of opportunity. Okay. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Take an attack. Okay. I got him, but I didn't get him. That was awesome. <laughs> You might want to actually target him or something, you know? That's right. Okay. I think he might not have his bludgeoning typed in correctly on his weapon. Or you don't have the uh, DR set up right. Or it's a different DR. Um, I wonder if the capital B... Capital yeah. B does not work on damage types. Or DR. It says type bludgeoning. Yeah, but there's you can't use capital letters. You can't uh, you can't use any capital letters. No. On the DR type or the overtime type. DR type. Oh. So he did take uh the full five points of damage and is uh dead. <laughs> Was that you you had the DR set up with the capital? Uh no the uh the Warhammers with the capital. I had it set uh, up with a capital. Yeah. Did you build your own Warhammer? What do you mean? Like didn't you just drag that out of the library? Um yeah, the drag and drop thing I caught on to a bit late. <laughs> Do you have your Warhammer set up for times three crit? Yes, no, I'm good there. Okay. I, can, I, I read from the book. I just didn't know that the capital and the not capital would be a thing. Yeah, well, that, that's just fantasy grounds because uh, it's all done through uh, code, and code is very specific. Understood. I just, I honestly didn't know the game was going to be that automated to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's quite nice. It's all news to me. <laughs> Okay, uh, you have uh, 
two skeletons that are on the ground. Uh, the professor is still tied up and appears to be dead. I'm going to move up here and uh, stomp this guy back down into his uh, tomb and push some more dirt on top of him again. <laughs> I'm going to go, uh, you know, make it across over my chest and uh, say, stay buried. <laughs> Okay, uh, you managed to get him back into the ground. Uh, I say a prayer over the undead. There seem to clearly be people being, you know, ripped out of their graves. Okay. Um, I, I, is there a hole where the professor was? We're not at his thing yet. Oh, okay. All right. I'm. I'm actually if um. How turned up are the graves of the skeletons who climbed out? Is it just turned earth, or is there a hole? Um, yeah, uh, they, they crawled out of the ground, you know, uh, the scene from Kill Bill. <laughs> okay, so getting them back is going to be work. Um, I'll do that. I'll do that later. Yeah, this guy was still half in his grave, so I just kind of pushed his head back into it. <laughs> Okay, so what would you like to do now? We're going to the professor's grave, right? Yep, we're going to keep going. Uh, I'm going to detect evil in the direction of the um, professor's grave. Staying there where we are now. Uh, you get a little residual, but it matches the evil coming from the professor. <laughs> there's still evil coming from the professor. Well, I'm, I'm sure there's residual from where he's dead now. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Um, all right. Um, all right. But other than that, you're not detecting any different kind of evil. Okay. Since uh, it's it's rather over, uh, I would consider overwhelmed at this point with you know red herrings. I'm I'm gonna stop detecting and just be ready to hit stuff with a hammer. I'm gonna put my weapon away and uh, grab the ropes and start dragging them again. Okay, uh, you managed to uh, make it over to the professor's grave without any problems whatsoever. for the last 100 feet. <laughs> <laughs> and you get over to his plot, and uh, it's it's the same story. Uh, you know, he crawled his way out, but, you know, it's freshly buried, so all the dirt is nice and loose, and will make it a little bit easier to rebury the professor. Is there any religion rule I can make that might help me determine why this is happening if someone's not doing it themselves? Was there some something wrong with the rite by Pharasma priest to consecrate the dead? Sure, blame the other religious order. Uh, yeah, you can roll it. That's right. Hey, they were the ones doing the job. Whoever did it. <laughs> um, I, from from what you can tell and from what you can remember from um, the professor's funeral, um, everything seemed to be, you know, according to custom and tradition, and all the I's were dotted and the T's were crossed. Okay. So, bury the professor, or... Yep. yep. Yeah. Before we bury him again, can I, I imagine the body's been kind of damaged, but can we kind of, you know, take a glance at it and just see if we, you know, if there's anything left on it that gives any idea why he rose as the dead? Is there anything 
um, that would suggest that, you know, his death wasn't accidental, that, you know, he wasn't crushed by a piece of falling masonry. I mean, now that we've kind of packed him up again, there probably isn't anything, but it's probably worth a quick look before we enter him again. Yeah, give me just a second. I don't know whether it would be heal for medicine or something else. Uh, yeah, let's start with the heal. And... There we go. <laughs> okay, from um, the um, Do you have a detect magic? I do. Um, yeah, why don't y'all roll a detect magic? What do you mean roll? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you are able to detect uh, some residual magic on the professor's body. Um, Give me just a second, and I'll tell you. I'm assuming probably necromatic. Um, those. um, you are detecting. Coming from the professor, um, some residual evocation magic. Um, you're pretty confident that you think the professor may have been hit by a couple of magic missiles. That doesn't sound like masonry at all. And you can, um, with your hill check, um, the damage to the professor's neck and head, um, it's a little precise, uh, you know, as if someone wanted to prevent you from speaking with the dead. Okay. So you you have enough doubt to believe the official story that something fell and killed him. More likely, uh, something was dropped on him to cover it up. Murder. 
And then it takes uh, about 20, 30 minutes to uh, truly get the professor back in the ground and say whatever religious rites you uh, wish to. And what would you like to do now? Well, we're in the graveyard anyways. It's the middle of the night, so we probably wouldn't be disturbed. Maybe we should go check out that crypt. I have used a lot of my resources for the day. I'm not sure it's a good idea to run down there when I don't have anything. It crossed my mind to say you have hands, and then I thought better of it. I have hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, guys. He is handy. I mean, we're already partway through the night, so it would only be another five hours before we could come back. So hopefully the uh, army of the undead won't rise up in that five hours and come after us. Check it out or call it a night? Well, that, that's just my opinion. Wouldn't see what the other two think. We don't know exactly where this is. Why don't we... We could at least locate it. How specific was our information? Did we just know it was sort of in a general vicinity, or...? That's what it seems, somewhere. We've narrowed it down to that block next to us. Okay. Uh, yeah, um, I'm not sure how specific the professor's journal entry was, but... Um, he did make a note that the roof of it was... Um, decorated with a pair of leering gargoyle statues. Okay. I, I'm fine with whatever. If people want to come back in the morning, I mean, it is safer to poke around the graveyard in the morning. We're also more likely to be seen by someone in town, and, you know, we'll be the next batch of necromancers then, but you know, risk and reward. Well, it's unlikely that people from town will be hanging around the graveyard at, you know, 5 o'clock or 6 o'clock in the morning or whatever when we come back. And uh, if people see us heading here, we just say we're going to pay our respects to our departed friend. Okay, back to the inn, or to the Lower Moor's house. Yeah, we'll go back to Kendra's house. And... To finish off our sleep. You managed to uh, rest the... Uh... You managed to get your full rest required. Excellent. I want to note if there's any, like, lights nearby on the way back, if there's anyone walking about, at least... Uh, Just to keep a general eye out. Town is uh, very quiet. And you're not seeing uh, any house lights on. You know, you see some light off in the distance more toward the center of town, but not along the route that you're taking. All right. Okay, it's the next morning. Uh, Back to the graveyard. After I eat some delicious breakfast from this kind lady, uh, I'm ready to head out. I got a full stomach and a full complement of spells and abilities. Yeah, my eyes are listless and I'm kicking dust on the way back there. I'm kind of angry that someone would bring my friend back as a dead, undead creature. <laughs>
Okay. Um, you're back at the uh, professor's grave. Uh, to act like you're uh, paying your respects just in case anyone's standing around. And you're not seeing anyone in the graveyard. No one wrote, you know. What time of morning do you want to go back to the graveyard? Right after we wake up and eat. Okay. Uh, Let's say it's uh, roughly 8 in the morning. And as you walk through town, you know, whoever's out on the street is, you know, they notice you and nod at you. But, you know, they really don't strike up conversation or seem to be paying much interest in what you're doing. And you make it to the professor's grave. Uh, there's no one in the graveyard. All right. Let's go find the script, friends. I'm going to redo light on myself also, just in case. I'm cradling my greatsword as opposed to keeping it sheathed. But I'm not like holding it by the handle. Okay. Like just up. I'm just cradling it along my shoulder because at this point, yeah. I'm not very trusting. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. And you're going to set off to search the circle, I'm assuming. Yep. And if y'all put a token where you're searching. Well, I'm in that circle, right it only here. looks like there's only one building. And, and Darius, uh, you might move up to truly which is the only one building right there in the area and directly in front of you you see a pair of uh, leering gargoyle statues above the door Uh, there's a single stone door with a rusty looking lock I'll go let the others know that it looks like this might be the place Rather than calling out, we don't need to draw any attention. Can I do disable device untrained? I can do it trained. Um, all three of you notice when you're looking at the door. Um, the the lock is actually broken. Um, part of oh. it's. Part of it's been melted by acid, and then it's been put back into place so that if you're just casually looking at it, uh, the lock appears intact. Makes sense. The professor probably kind of broken the lock now, picked the lock, so we probably got through that way. So, what do you want to do now? Let's go in. I'll just check out the door, make sure that there's, you know, no lingering traps or anything. Okay, uh, you are not seeing any traps. Seen her caution, I'm going to look around as well. And uh, you're not seeing anything that is uh, truly suspicious to you. All right, well, I'm going to take the lock off. I'm going to open the door, and I will lead the way inside. Okay, as you open the door... And I gotta put a grid on this map. Uh, just give me like one minute, I'll be right back. Yeah, not a problem. 
I've also got about uh, 10 minutes that I'm going to head to work. Man, I really wish we had fantasy grounds when I worked nights. <laughs> Makes them go fast. How are you tonight for playtime? Um, I'm good probably up until about midnight. 12 Eastern. Oh, nice. I can only do 11 tonight, unfortunately. Ah. Uh. Okay. Share the map. Um, as you open the door, all right, I'm back. As you open the door, uh, it leads down. Uh, you see a set of stairs going down. Token. And it opens up into a uh, semi-ornate room for a uh, crypt. Um, you, you see... Um, it's a large crypt lined with empty niches. Um, you don't see any dead being interned here. Um, on the floor, um, you know, it, it's very obvious that this chamber has been empty or unused for several decades. And you can see um, a set of uh, footprints in the dust leading from the door to um, from the stairwell to one of the doors ahead of you. And then there's another set of footprints uh, leading out the door back out. Uh, what are the stairs? I'm sorry, you broke up? Uh, the statues to the right and left. Um, they are actually uh, just uh, ornamental religious icons of, you know, their statues of Erasma. Uh, what are these here? These are doors? Yes. Uh, to the north of you are a set of doors. Right, I'm going to go up to one and put my ear up to it and listen. Okay. Um, you are not hearing anything coming from the other side of the doors. I'll look back at my teammates and say, I don't hear anything, and I'll wave them up. You coming, Vigor? Why didn't I ask the church about this place when I was there? Because you didn't know about it? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to check the door for traps, see if there's anything here. Okay. Do you want another perception, or can I use that one? Uh, yeah, you're, you're not finding any traps. And the doors, uh, there's no keyholes, so <laughs> they are unlocked. I'll open it. 
Okay, and when you open it... Initiative. <laughs> uh, it opens up into another small room with a uh, set of stairs going down, and you can see a sarcophagus in the distance. I'll say it. it looks clear, guys. I'll move in. I'm going to look left to right. Okay. Far across the street. As you look left to right in the corners of the room. And let me unmask it. You see two giant centipedes in the room. Oh, lovely. And would you like to roll for initiative? Not really. <laughs> and Lonely Sword, you are up. Can you lock me, please? I wish they had a uh, extension to auto lock tokens. When you're in combat, <laughs> I'm gonna move over here, not charging, just moving. And I'm going to fight defensively. A little too defensively. Yeah. And... Oh, one roll knowledge as well. And... With, uh, your... Knowledge, nature, role, uh, you're pretty much aware that, you know, they're just giant versions of uh, centipedes. All right. Okay, um... The stairs are going to equal difficult terrain for charging and stuff, right? He said down. Those those are going down, they're not up. I, I said this, but the stairs are going to prove to be difficult terrain, right? I can't charge from where I am at the centipede. Going downstairs is generally not, but, I mean, DM decision? Uh, yeah, I'll let you be able to charge down. Okay. Then I'm going to charge that centipede. And there's you, a way to set charging, right? Do you have the, uh, yeah, I got the effects here. I can drag them on, yeah. Is it under effects? I have them all built in my things. I don't know if there's um, actually in charge or not. I see uh, conditions. I don't see. Okay. I just had this talk on Fantasy Grounds <laughs> on the forums. Uh, if you'll click the library button and then click the modules button, uh, you will see one that's uh, BD RPG House Effects. If you will open that, uh, a whole bunch of effects will appear in the effects box. 
Okay, what is it under library? Uh, it's BD RPG ha uh, House Effects. Yeah, that charge isn't done right, though. Okay. All right, I got charge on. I don't. I, I'll. I'll ask. It. Oh, modules. Okay, there. Okay. What's wrong with the charge? It says AC minus two, ATK plus two. The ATK is only one roll, but with that one, it will last for one round. So all of your uh... tax of opportunity or anything will also get it. Or if you have you know multiple tax because you're high level. That's why I have mine set up as two separate effects. The ATK is just okay. one. And then you the said you charge. charged it onto me, right? Yeah, you have you have them. Okay. Yeah, I have I'll my charge that... attack set to one roll, and then my AC is set for one round. I will make that. I was actually copying it from a video from another guy's game. <laughs> yeah, a, a lot of people do it like that. They just don't realize that uh, it doesn't work properly if you do it like that in Fantasy Ground. Okay. You're still not targeting. You have to hold control and click the guy, or you can drag it, the roll, and drop it on him on the map. And you hit him. You're still not targeting, but you tried to move your character on top of him. There you go. Whew. Damn! Got <laughs> It's a great sword for you. Just, Absolutely. just wait. Soon I'm going to be dual wielding great swords because I get uh, my damage increases as I level because I'm a war priest. Yeah, that's only if you get a hand. Oh, I, I, I get another hand to do it, but I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Darius, you're up. Yeah, I also don't, I also don't get 2d6 damage to level 20. And centipede number two is going to try to take a bite out of Lonely Sword, and yet yeah, does not happen. Can you do it in one hit, Lonely Sword? Probably not, unless I crit. Ah, oh. <laughs> almost. So close. <laughs> so close. Oh, no, I did it. <laughs> All right, I actually need to head to work now if you guys want to take 10. Uh, yeah, if that's okay with everybody, because uh, it'll take a minute to uh, finish out this room. That's so, cool. We'll see you in 10.